It feels humid in here, though. I'll tell it, you that. It is. It's humid in the, in the building room, too. Yeah, I don't know what's up. All right. All right, now we're going? Now we're going. I guess start all over? Yep. Okay, here we go. Inspired by the adventures of our nurses, therapists, and techs, A Beer with Atlas is the only healthcare traveling, craft beer drinking podcast. Each week, we'll open a few beers, talk about the brewery and the style of beer, and then dive into some research curated specifically for each episode. In the end, we hope each one sounds like a conversation you'd have with your friends while enjoying a few cold ones. Welcome to another episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. I'm Dolan. I think every time I say it faster and faster. It seems that way. Remember the, <laughs> Rich. Like the Micro Machines guy? Remember that guy? Oh, yeah. 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 I remember that guy. Yeah. He's still alive, I think, too, isn't he? I don't know. I just remember he was on Saved by the Bell once or twice. Oh, that's right. Substitute teacher, I think. Yeah. It was awesome. Had a nice uh, mustache. It had, this has that has nothing to do with anything, but uh, nope. th- we have a uh, from Norway Brewing Company in Norway, Maine. We have dad jokes from hmm. Norway. Uh, it's a collab between Norway Brewing Company and Handbrigretti. Handbrigretti. Okay. Uh, it is a come in. It is a brewery in Norway. Oh, an oh. actual brewery okay. in Norway. So a very small one, uh, but Norway brewing isn't very big either. So, so I there guess. you go. I wonder what the connection is there. Do you have anything on that? Uh, well, Norway. Norway. Uh, that's my guess. That's, that's my. <laughs> that's probably my guess too. I don't know. <laughs> kind of like sister cities, you know? Oh, maybe like, that's it. Like when they I was just in, called up and said, "Hey, we're in Norway, Maine." <laughs> <laughs> what's the What's the uh, country code for Norway? I don't, I don't know. know. Just call it just random. Is there just, a brewery in Norway? Sure. <laughs> yeah, you can talk to Handbrig Ritty. And oh yeah, Hamburg Richty. Oh yeah, those, those guys are great. Yeah, they're cool dudes. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what to think about this one. So this one came from the main. Watch meet out! And watch out! Watch Uh-oh. out! Poor, Uh-oh. poor, poor, poor. Oh, it's spilling all over. Uh-huh. Oh, look at that! This is not an episode unless is... we spill on the table, right? Oh boy! Unless Rich spills. What's on the that table. goo right there? That oh, that's is some that yeast. yeast. That's yeast, buddy. All right. Uh, yeah. So this came from the main meet and greet, correct? Yep. Yep. Uh, it's a I, I thought twice about this one because it's a saison. That's uh, not normally our fav. Normally, yeah, our favorite. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that little bit of yeast there on the table. <laughs> I, I really like the bottle, like the the art on the label, actually. Well, and I think you know, two of the three of us here are dads, and you know, Dolan's doing his best dad work this summer with Rico. So <laughs> I, I think I, I think we should probably try. Then we'll, yeah. we'll give this one a shot. There's he's, some good tie ins He's a pet daddy. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. It's got dog those. dad. I actually call my dog Coraline, my dog tur. <laughs> I've done that before. I, yep, <laughs> yep. What was uh, Cody? Cody, your dog yeah. Cody. Cody, your that was the best ugliest dog ever, man. <laughs> yeah, he yes. was. He was awesome. Yeah. Now Jenny. we got his reincarnation running around. Yeah, that's true. Benny, Benny, oh, or Benny, Beanie Weenie. Benny will bark at dudes. Yes. Only Likes dudes. girls. Mm-hmm. Only dudes. Smart. So yeah. Very smart. <laughs> uh, so Norway Brewing is located at 237 Main Street, Norway, Maine. Closed Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday through Friday, 4 to 9. Saturday, 11 to 9. Sunday, 11 to 3. Mm-hmm. That's an odd. Just to pop in. I guess. Hurry up. Yeah. It's Sunday. Get home. you got to get home for the second set of football games. When I noticed, mm-hmm. I, when I looked them up, it said the whole tap room was closed. Oh. Because of staffing, they were so short. They're like, "We'll just open up next Monday." Oh, okay. So it was something like that. Mm-hmm. But I, just, I haven't seen that in our episodes yet. Look at there's yeast on the side of my. Glass oh yeah, too. that's extra flavor packet it's- right there. <laughs> that's free too. <laughs> flavor chunks. Mm-hmm. Flavor chunks. Uh, the bottle on here says, "Dad jokes from Norway." It was brewed in January of 2019. And it was barrel aged. I saw on the back of that. Mm-hmm. We use blue ox, pale, and wheat malt, rye malt, and main grains flaked oats for this farmhouse ale, and fermented it with, or that? fermented it in oak with our house yeast. So that's probably what you got on the table well, over that's there. That's what you got right there. It looks a like sample a sample of it. Yeah. Rorschach. Yeah, and it was aged yeah, it in white wine barrels for over a year. Mm. That's a Rorschach. I see. Uh, I see a shark. Let's see, I see something, a crustacean or mm-hmm. one of those uh, horseshoe crabs. Is what oh, it looks yeah. Like to me. <laughs> That's it. Uh, okay, you got to try this. It's a Saison. It smells. 
very saisony fun yeah. housey funky i would say um i kind of like how it's a little sour up front it um, is a little sour up front yeah you can tell it was aged in wine barrels mm-hmm. it's dry it's dry okay so i like that do you think because it, it, it's mellow yeah. it's not a it's not a saison well it's not flowery um, to me right do you think it's that's the wine barrel or do you think it's the aging that does that I, th- I don't know i think it's what i do think is that that tart sour up front is the best part of it for me me too i'm mm-hmm. i think that's the only part of this beer that i i enjoy mm-hmm. not because it's a bad beer mm-hmm. but because of the styles that i like and yeah yeah i think you're right the wine barrel really does come out and mm-hmm. that, maybe that's what that is yeah but it's, it's very not dry. so dry that as like it's just a standard one i feel like a lot of other ones i've had before have been more dry mm-hmm. than this one and yeah. i think that sourness helps it quite a uh, bit mm-hmm. so right on their website it says uh they are a family-owned microbrewery right off of route 26 in norway maine uh, founded in 2015 by charles mellis m-e-l-h-u-s mellis sure probably i i love a address that's 237 Main Street. Main Street. That's perfect. You know you're in a small town when breweries on Main Street. I did a little research on Norway. Oh, okay. Did you do any of this? No. All right, so how big do you think, if it's on 237 Main Street, how big do you think Norway, Main is? Population? Yeah. 600 people. Yeah. No, a little bit more than that. Okay. But about the size mm. town I grew up in. Oh, okay. About size uh, town that Dolan, maybe. Mm, what, like 20,000? Yeah. No. Is that Columbus? 20,000? Columbus, 20,000. Wow. Yeah. Jeepers. Well, not that big. 5,000. 5,000? 5,000 mm. people. Which about, that's that's about how big Concordia was, the, the town oh. I grew up in. I guess that's enough people to have a brewery, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I thought, okay, what, if I was Brian, oh. and I looked up <laughs> and I looked up information about the town like what would be interesting so i looked up people that were from here yeah okay no dice yeah there's nobody <laughs> no, no, no. no famous people here's the most here's the most fun i found uh norway maine was once known as the snowshoe capital of the world that's good yeah yeah uh there was a dude by the name of walter tubbs who founded the tubbs snowshoe company in 1906 mm. yeah and that's it right. stuck around it was bought out after a while but probably you know handmade back then for yeah. sure they made skis and snowshoes, and but mainly snowshoes. So. Yeah. What is that? What is that type of skiing where you're you're not like going downhill necessarily? Cross country. Cross country mm-hmm. skiing. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if they. Maybe I yeah. know in Maine. I don't know where it, what part of Maine this is, but Maine in general is big for mm-hmm. trapping and stuff. Oh. Mm. And like you know, pelt collection. Yeah. So snowshoes being from there makes a lot of sense. I thought I wrote this down, but like, where is Norway, Maine? Oh, here it is. It's north of Portland, but then west of Augusta. So oh, Augusta so. is the capital of Maine. If yeah. my uh, homework help, You're right? You know, serves me so correctly. There, there. Okay. So yeah. it's kind of it's south and west in Maine. So as Maine kind of goes up mm-hmm. and to the right, it's very it's very south and west. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. That's the extent of my Norway main. Knowledge. Well, that's more than I had because I'd never heard of it before this. <laughs> I had to look it up. Yeah. Um, some of the other beers I saw on their tap list, they had a straight Berliner Weiss, 4%, mm-hmm. six bucks a pint. I was like, that's probably, that's not bad. That's not bad. Mr. Grumpy Pants, mm. uh, 5.8 ABV percent on that one. That one's 750 a pint. That'd be my son's name every once in a while, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or Dolan, I guess, too. Oh. I mean, that's- <laughs> <laughs> me um, no. no here's one i liked i wrote down hop pop hop pop four percent a dry hopped sour oh. that's one of those beers we've talked about them in other states where they use all ingredients from the state oh nice so this one's all 100 percent main ingredients hmm. Hmm. super happy birthday cake number six which is oh. i guess like their annual beer that they do for their birthday okay that would be around, you said 15, right? 215, so, yeah, yeah. So that's a stout at 7.5%. Oh. Um, and it's not on tap, but you buy a can there and it'll crack it and you pour it mm. that way. So that, that must be something that they have around. Okay. And then um, this one is called Inglorious Bastard, oh. 6%. It's a farmhouse ale. So probably something mm. very similar to this before it hit the barrel. Spelled like the movie? Yes. Oh, nice. Centennial. Good. Mandarina hops, Bavaria hops, and it is then dry hopped with Hallertau hops, which we've talked about. We have talked. That's a fun one to say. 
Oktoberfesty type beers. Mm. And then uh, the last one I wrote down, um, Grump Olympagus. <laughs> Which is their imperial stout? What is their what is their deal? I don't with? know. They like grumpy stuff, I guess. Uh, Nine point five percent ABV. Um, I think it was twelve dollars and fifty cents, and it was for a five hundred milliliter bottle. That's how you get that one. So, hmm. their strongest that I could find, which is has my interest, of course. Oh, of course. So that's uh, that's some of the beers that they have at this location. So kind of all over the style stuff. Yeah. But kind of more traditional. Were there labels? I didn't even look. Like, this is a very funny, kind of, like, written in crayon. The dad's, like, got his shirt half mm-hmm. untucked kind of thing. Similar? Uh, some of them, yeah, for the most part. But this is, yeah, this is the only one that had that sort of, uh, like, a kid did it effect, you know, for sure. Hmm. Um, Let's see. We got to talk about some dad jokes. I would hope so. I mean, that's the name of the <laughs> that's beer. That's the name. I anticipated yeah. you bringing at least two dad jokes. I brought in some. Okay. And um, some of these were from New Zealand. Oh, okay. So I thought, these will be extra well, terrible. Well, they got dads there, <laughs> and so all right. I'm not a fan of the dad joke, per se. Yeah. Not, not usually. Um, so I picked out some, and we'll see how they go. In the right context, I could be a fan. I'm going to deliver them as dryly as I can to match this beer. Perfect. Which Spice Girl can carry the most petrol? That's how you know it's a... Oh, yeah. <sighs> petrol. petrol. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. And I don't even... This doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> jerry can. Oh, because jerry can. That's a... Yeah, it's <laughs> that a, what's that's called? what you carry your petrol in. Okay. Jerry... But what does that have to do with Spice Girl? She's a... Spice Girl was Jerry, jerry Hallwell. Yeah. Mm. Jerry can. But I've never ah. heard of a jerry can, so I didn't know what that meant. It's, it's like, like a gas gas gasoline can. gas okay. can. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So here in we go. Australia and New Zealand. Huh. There you go. <laughs> um, here's one. R.I.P. Boiled water. You will be missed. <laughs> I don't get it. R.I.P. Boiled water? Because it goes away. Yeah. Turns uh, into vapor. Mist. It turns uh, into mist. a vapor mist. See? <laughs> like you hold Marquis your hand over, right? stupid. Yeah. These are so Come good. Yeah, it's a dad joke. <laughs> this one took me, I had to read it like three or four times, and then I finally <laughs> understood it was a joke. Okay. I thought it was just like a typo. Right. <laughs> What's brown and sounds like a bell? Dung. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> right? That's what oh, I was like. Oh, it's brown. And sounds, and like, sounds a like a bell. Like a bell. Which dung. would be dong. dong. So. <laughs> Oscar thinks it's funny. Look, I, he, I see him smiling underneath his mask. He there. likes a dad joke yeah. sometimes. <laughs> uh, what do you call a man with a plank on his head? Now, this one. It has not made sense to me yet. What do you call a man with a plank on his head? Uh huh. I don't know. Edward. Edward. Ed. Ed Wood. No, it's just straight up Edward. <laughs> Edward. Yep. I don't, Edward. That's the joke. Edward. In New Zealand, maybe Edward. that makes sense. Maybe. I, <laughs> like a wood. Yeah. Like I don't know. Knucklehead. I don't know. Head. Ed. I don't know. I don't know. Last one. It's not really a joke. It's just a sentence. Okay. I'm having a nightmare. Where I'm a marquee, then where I'm a teepee, the doctor says I'm too tense. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's no, those are pretty terrible. Yeah, even dad jokes in New Zealand are terrible. Yep. <laughs> so. That's how that went. That's, That's my list of dad jokes for you. Uh, so. yeah. I gotta tell you, those, uh, yeah, those are bad. Hashtag knee slappers. Mm. I I remember I was a few years ago, and I got a cup. I don't remember where I got this cup from, but it was full of Halloween jokes. Okay, it was a plastic cup, mm-hmm. and I read them and made a video and I put it on my Facebook page. And I read the jokes just like that, and you know, like didn't laugh or anything. And hmm. it, it was good good comedy for me. That's something I, I'm into. So I, I do miss the pre-pandemic Brian uh, random videos on Facebook. Yeah. Though. The, yep. Now I could do without the post workout sweaty what? No, videos. Those are fine. <laughs> but, no, I'm just yeah, you know fitness. That's all I'm about now, guys. Can you tell? Fitness pizza in your mouth or beer yeah, <laughs> or both. <laughs> yep, that's a good combo. Yep. Um, that's pretty much what I had for dad jokes. Okay. Um, but I do have some other research that we can get into, if, unless you've got some other stuff. You the other thing I had on. was I thought I'm gonna look into this hand brigretti. Mm-hmm. Brig brigret it brigret it. I'm gonna spell it for you. Can I just see it? Absolutely. It's on the. It's oh. on the. Yeah. 
H-A-A-N-D-B-R-Y-G-G-E-R-I-E-T. That's not a word. Well, in, no. in Norwegian it is. Handbergeriet. Okay. I actually took it and put it into, uh, I looked up a pronunciation thing on Google. Okay. And it uh-huh. pronounced it for me in a very American way. Oh, so Hamburg-rit. it didn't. <laughs> yes. That's pretty much what it was. Handbergeriet. Handbergeriet. Okay. Is a Norway brewery founded in 2005 by I'm going to destroy these names, but they're never going to listen to no, this. So that's hear. totally fine. Jens Madal, M A U D A L, Rune Eriksson, Rune Eriksson. That's a Viking name. That's there. a badass that's name cool, right there. Yeah. Uh, Arnie Eddie, E I D E. So I assume that's Eddie yeah. Eddie. Okay. Uh, and Egil Hild, E G I L H I L D E. Okay. Yeah, Egil. It's pretty. I think Rune's probably my favorite out of that one. Yeah. So, uh, the brewery was situated at a site of an old textile factory in Drammen, and then in a rail yard, and now it resides in an old industrial building. Sounds like the right place for a brewery. Yep. It sounds very. That's how they uh, do it here in the states. Yeah. Exactly. On that bottle, they're doing. It says hand H A A N D on the circle in the front. What is that? Just the brewery we're talking about? That's their logo. Yep. That's yeah. their logo. Yeah. So okay. it's a hand, and then it's. The rest Bur- of the letters. Bulgarian, yeah. yeah, in like uh, like a scribbly kind of font, mm-hmm. handwritten looking font. In uh, And then if you go down the list, like every one of their beers is, it's hand Bulgarian and then whatever the beer is. And there's, I'd never heard of some of these before. Oh, like the styles N- or never, whatever? Never, never. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I wouldn't try it, but. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I know about hand Bulgarian. In hmm. Norway, the, uh, I guess, sister brewery, maybe? I don't know. But the uh, collab on this one with okay. Norway Brewing. So how are we feeling on it now? Mm. Did you get your um, fill of the yeast? Look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm still not a Saison fan at all. But here's the thing. I appreciate the wine barrel in this, though. The more you drink it, mm-hmm. the sourness, that wine barrel sourness comes through. Yeah, it's oaky and mm-hmm. not, not terrible, I, I would say. I mean, this is one, if we we're, if somebody said, hey, you got to have a Saison today, this, this would be one I would yeah. pick. Yeah, yeah. I don't, don't mind it. I'm probably not going to pour myself another. Mm. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I mean, very rarely do we leave any behind. <laughs> true. We're not yeah. done yet, though. No. no. There's got to be some Saison fans here. Kyle will try it. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll pass the bottle Thomas, around. You know, see. from collab with the Hamburg Gretty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he'd be like, oh, you know Rune? <laughs> Rune Erickson? Yeah. yeah. And see, on, the bottle, on the bottle, it even brings up two more people. Dad jokes from Norway was brewed in 2019 with Stefan and Ragnar. Oh, Ragnar. From Hand Bergeriet. Geriet. Yeah, those are great names. As in homage to their Ardini's blonde. Okay. Mm, yeah. Hmm. I'd hate to read that after having a couple of these. Right. <laughs> or maybe it would make sense. Maybe oh, it would just maybe. click into place. Yeah. yeah. There you um, go. The research I was going to do, I was like, you know, kind of like you. I was thinking, what am I going to do here? Yeah. Saw that beer name, Glorious Bastards. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, I like Tarantino movies. Yeah. I own that movie. Yeah. I've never seen it. You didn't watch it? Mm. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah. I watched it just for this. Killing Nazis. Yes. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about some uh, movie facts. So there's Ooh. spoilers All right. for a, what, 13-year-old movie? Uh, yeah. yeah. That was up for i think and got nominated for an oscar i thought it won something it did did oh yeah well, we're gonna get to it but to this is it definitely first tarantino movie that was nominated for an oscar okay i mean shouldn't shouldn't have been but i mean let's Should be honest Pulp Fiction, but, yeah, well, or even before that so. I'd, t- I'd say reservoir dogs before that but that's yeah. that's another podcast for another day probably All right, so here's um, just some facts of the movie. First of all, you've seen it. Oh, yeah. Dolan? No. Okay. Oh. Spoilers. Mm. <laughs> I still have the homework to, to go watch Reservoir Dogs. Oh, my God. That was well like 100 years. And 100, go all the way through. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Okay. What was yeah. it, 100 episodes ago you gave me that assignment? At least. At yeah. least. You're getting an F right now. No <sighs> kidding. I hate to tell you. <laughs> all right. Tarantino. Mm-hmm. He wanted the climactic scene with Diane Kruger to go down the way he wanted it to. Okay. So 
in the movie, um, she's trying to help U.S. She's kind of like a spy, mm-hmm. right? She's mm-hmm. an actress, um, speaks German, some French, and she's helping the Americans. And this German soldier that has fallen in love with her basically has figured out she's a spy. Yep. So she, she's like, uh-oh, my plan is coming to an end. I've got to do something. She shoots him mm-hmm. a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah. He falls down. <sighs> And then she does that movie thing where she's like, oh, I kind of liked him. I better go check on him, make sure he's whatever. Mm -hmm. And he ain't dead yet. Nope. And he rolls over. And uh, that stuff goes down, right? Yep. So, no, I'm thinking of the wrong person. That's something totally different. But that happens, too, and we're going to talk about that. That does happen, yeah. This one I'm talking about is Diane Kruger, who is the one that Christoph Waltz. Christoph Waltz. Notices that she has the foot missing her shoe or whatever mm-hmm. she mm-hmm. finds the shoe in the bar yep and he strangles her he won yes, yes. God, my that one yes well guess what yeah tarantino was the one on camera choking her really? those were his arms it wasn't christoph waltz no really? so like the up close shots of her getting choked out was tarantino because he wanted to make sure he got the what he wanted to get do you think like they filmed it multiple times and he's just like no I, I'm, I'm not getting it and waltz one, was just like you do it yourself one take Oh, for crying Tarantino, out loud. one take. Um, Eli Roth, you know him? Fantastic, yes. He gained yep. 35 pounds. Uh, yeah. And he learned to cut hair. He was a barber. He, had, he like learned barber skills. Well, he went to, like, to barber school? And yeah, stuff? Wow. to be Donnie Donowitz, hmm? who was the bear, right? Wasn't that his nickname? Was that his I don't remember. I think he was the bear. He was the guy that had the baseball bat. Mm-hmm. He took care of German soldiers. Mm-hmm. Um, that part, you'll like this, okay. was originally offered to Adam Sandler. No. <laughs> and he turned it down. He had another movie going on around that film time. Little you Nicky know, or something? You know, I mean, Click some, or oh, whatever. Stupid. So, you know, it was probably that uh, one piece of garbage. Uh, what was the 8-bit movie? That, not the 8-bit. Oh, the, one with the video games? Yes. Yeah. Oh, Could have been. Was, oh, God, that was terrible. That was a horrible decision. Could have been that one. I don't know. Was that the one with Pac-Man, like, yes. yeah, growing up and down? Yeah. Oh. yeah. And it had Kevin James in it. Yeah, they yeah, all came to right. Earth and stuff. Oh, God, yeah. it was bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was that bad. movie. Yeah. Definitely yeah. worse than this movie. Well, yes. Um, yeah, so he turned it down. Mm-hmm. There was... I was looking for this because I, I saw... I did the research and then I watched the movie so I could look for these things. Okay. But there was a... In the research, that showed this glove pistol. Okay. So it was like just in, this, in the glove itself. Mm-hmm. It was like a tiny little gun. And they're like, this was a real thing. But I don't remember it in the movie. So I don't know. But there, apparently there was this a part of the movie where the guy's holding the gun and you can't even tell it because it's in the it's glove. It's in glove. And it's know. a Sedgley OSS 38. So a small, a small caliber. Yeah. Oh, okay. But he could shoot it from... Like in his hand or in his pinky or something, yeah. and the gun's in his glove. Like a little pea shooter, yeah. Kinda, yeah. So like real up close thing. Huh. Um. Let's see. They almost called off the movie because they were looking for somebody to play Colonel Hans Landa or Landa mm-hmm. because they had to find somebody who was, you know, could speak the language. Mm-hmm. Uh, he speaks five different languages in the movie, yep. pretty convincingly. Yep. Um. They needed him to be kind of funny like on the border of funny yeah but menacing and those are all tough these are all qualities that yes and they went through a lot of people yep like a lot of people and then they found christopher waltz and they said game on let's do this we got our guy i remember the story behind that and i can't remember of them finding uh, him yeah but i don't exactly remember the details but it was all of a sudden like there it is like there he is that's him um I think this is the first time I ever heard of him. I'm mm-hmm. sure he was around before, but yeah. this was his big, I guess, U.S. break, maybe? I think you've seen him in other stuff, though. It's possible. Um, this is the last movie that Sally Minky edited. So she was Tarantino's like right hand, and she edited all the movies before that. And then she died. She had cancer. Um, but this was the last one that she ever did with him. She mm. And his movies are very known for being edit- – the editing is great, mm. the way that everything's put together. So, yeah. Um, only 30% of the movies in English. The rest is in German? German, and Italian, yeah. French. Yeah. Uh, yeah, subtitles. Mm-hmm. So it's not a popcorn movie. 
this is one you got to pay attention to. Mm. Um, there's a whole big long Tarantino scene with dialogue like crazy in a you know a bar mm -hmm. in the basement of a bar, and after a while you don't even realize you're reading what they're saying. Oh. It's definitely not in get, English. You get so sucked in, uh -huh. like it's just yeah. This was like I said before the first of Tarantino's movies to get nominated for an Oscar, mm -hmm. and it was for Christopher Waltz, best supporting actor, and I. I don't know if he won or he not. He won. Yeah. I did. There he we won. go. He won for that one, yeah. Um, Tarantino worked on the script for 10 years for this movie. 10 years. And if you've seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I'm going to guess you have not. Nope. Oh, so good. There's kind of a throwback to this movie. Yes. With, with um, Leo's character. Uh -huh. He's an actor in the German movie, and he's got the flamethrower. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing there. Uh, and the first screening of the movie, before they cut it, was three hours and 10 minutes. Uh, okay. And then it ends up being two hours and 40 minutes. So they cut out 30 minutes of something here Typical and there. Tarantino yeah. time for a movie. Um, hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. I really liked it. And uh, I will probably watch it again, especially since I own it. Mm -hmm. um, BJ Novak is in it. Yes, he is. He's one of the... Hey, I know that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's one of the only ones to make it to the very end. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Brad Pitt's in it. He's, he's great. Oh, he's fantastic. Who's that? He's this actor from Missouri. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, Bradley, yeah. Bradley Pitts. Yeah, Bradley. If you, if you watch the... Uh, Bradley Pitts. Between Two Ferns. Mm. Bradley but, Pitts. Uh, that's, that's what I have for that. And glorious. Oh man, that would. It, it, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite Tarantino films, but it is certainly up there. It, it's definitely up there. I really just anything that Waltz was his scenes mm -hmm. were amazing. I was totally in for him. Yeah, like the whole milk thing at the very beginning where he's drinking that milk. Mm. It's kind of like I drink your milkshake. It's like that sort of <laughs> uh, intensity from There Will Be Blood. And they're like, God, that was he shows up at the farm and he's and there's um. Mm. Leah Sadu or whatever her name is. She's a French actress. She was in Bond movie. Mm. She's in all sorts of stuff now. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't even speak in this movie. Yeah. And she was one of the daughters, the farmer's daughters or whatever. And Christoph shows up at the farm and, you know, he's like, oh, it's hot. I'm thirsty. And they're trying to offer him wine. And he's like, this is a dairy farm. I, I want milk. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he just drinks it real weird. And he's just like, ah, so good. So he's so delicious. creepy and weird. And then right when he leaves, he's like, can I have another glass of milk? <laughs> And then kills the family that's hiding people yeah. there. So yeah, he knew the whole time. Yep, he the did. Whole time. Yeah, it, uh, Tarantino has a way of getting the very best out of actors for mm -hmm. whatever. I, I don't know how, but he just does. Yeah, and I one of my favorite things about him is he'll bring back people that you've seen, oh, yeah, or that haven't been super famous or yep. or were famous and then haven't been in a thing mm -hmm. for a while. Yep. So you know, like that was with Travolta, of Travolta, course. Travolta, man, that but was oh. really with Kurt Russell too. Yeah. Like he he did him in a couple of movies, mm -hmm. which was which was kind of cool to see. Yeah, or how? I, yeah, I just if you haven't seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, holy smokes, mm -hmm. that's good. And if you understand the story that he's kind of that that it falls into at the end and yeah. how it swerves, because uh -huh. you see what you see what's going to happen, yeah. you know, and then it doesn't go that way, and you're like, what? Well, it's because he like he takes history, yeah, and then he just rips it up. He's yeah. kind of twists it a he's little like, bit. This you know what's going to happen. You yeah, think? You think. Because th this movie did not end the way history ended. No. Glorious Bastards. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. He just twists it just a little bit. It was it was good. Yeah. Still one of my favorite lines of all time. At, at the end of Pulp Fiction, when they're standing there after he hoses them down and he puts mm -hmm. all of their clothes on, he's like, what, what do they look like? They look like dorks. Yep. You look like dorks. With the huh. banana slug t-shirt. Exactly. Yeah. Ah, she's your clothes. I would curse, but yeah. Oscar's here, so. Yeah. These are your clothes. <laughs> Dorks. Dorks. There you go. All right. Well, uh, TripAdvisor. Okay. I just, I didn't do the one on, in Norway, in Norway yeah. proper. How's that? Sure. But I did the one in Norway. So, uh, and I did find it, I found a bad one. Hmm. Yeah. Couldn't pronounce beer names. I, well, Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's it's not. Here you go. Okay. Just, we'll just read it. Uh, so TripAdvisor, four out of five, four point five out of five on eighty-eight reviews. It's listed as the number one restaurant in Norway, Maine. So, okay. and looking at their menu, that looks like they had some pretty decent food. 
I didn't, surprisingly, I didn't even look at it. Yeah, no, the, the menu looked really, really good. And so that's why I picked this one out. So MS Sands 2016 said, this is a disappointment. Mm. Disappointment. Uh, the menu was lacking variety. Beer was quite good. We left right after the glass of beer since nothing on the menu was appealing. No. I know, right? You what didn't was even on try. the menu? What was on the menu? The menu looked good. I mean, the menu had a lot of good mm. food. Come on. I know, you didn't even try. You, you weren't even hungry in That's the first like place. when this kid over here says yeah. he doesn't like something and he's never tried to eat mm-hmm. it before. That's that's what this review that's is. That's exactly what I thought. I don't like that My at all. My son's like, yeah, I'm not going to, I don't want to eat that vegetable. Have you ever had it before? No. no. Well, I don't like it. How do you know that? That's right. You don't that's know. That's when you hold them down and just stick it in their mouth. Mm-hmm. Yep. Untapped. Uh, only 32 check-ins for this beer. Wow. Limited. I'm guessing it's not on tap. I mean, it seems like, you know, barrel age so. probably would, I'm guessing, would not fly off the shelf. Mm. Barrel age stays on. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But in a town of 5,000, I guess, I mean, yeah. you have to be deliberate to go there to, you know, to pick it up or whatever. And it's so. probably pretty amazing we got this. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, so and we small. aged it for a year in that fridge. Yeah, it was the main meet and greet, so it's mm-hmm. been back there for yeah. a year. Yeah. That's awesome. In 2021, 20, I believe, mm-hmm. when they went. Yeah, so. Yep. 32 check-ins. Where do you think we land on the dad jokes from Norway? Ooh. Ah, uh, I'm going to go 362. Mm. I'm going to say 3.44. 3.94. Oh, maybe we know. Maybe they know something about yeah. saisons that we don't. I feel yeah. like that's pretty accurate. That's about where I'm going to go with it. I, I give it a three. I go yeah. three and a half. I might go three seven five. There you go. Maybe I'll go four. Maybe mm-hmm. we'll see. The wine barrel really, I think, added something to it. I really think so. I know one thing for me personally. I would not want this to get real warm. No, no. no. Like you got to hit it. And quit it. Yep. With this one. <laughs> Man, it's only a small bottle, so you yeah. should be all, you should be all right with yep. that. So, all right. Uh, next week, well, next week we, we still have summer beers. That's I mean, okay. It's it may hot. not seem like right. It yeah. Oktoberfest is in stores. It's in sights. I've seen some pumpkin beer, beers on the shelves. That's too. true. Yep. yep. Uh, the restaurants are starting to turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess when this airs. Yeah. Oh, they probably they, will have. They, they had been turned, yeah. yeah. It'll, but. it'll make me sad. When my go-to in the summer when we go to just like regular places, right? Red Robin, places sure. like that, mm-hmm. would be Sam Adams Summer Ale. Yeah. It's nice. It's fruity. It's it's just it's just nice. It's good yeah. to have with a burger. It's going to turn to Oktoberfest soon. And it'll take me a minute. I love Oktoberfest. Yeah. But it'll take me a minute to kind of get used to, oh, I don't the get the maltiness. nice light yeah. beer out of this it's or whatever. It's definitely a little heavier. Yeah, that's true, so. Mm. It'll take me back one time, and then I'll be happy. Like one episode, and we'll be in the saddle. We'll be ready to go. Damn straight. <laughs> All right. Until then, we're not going anywhere for a while. Let's have another beer. Thank you for listening to A Beer with Atlas. Special thanks to our brand team for producing the show. Each episode of A Beer with Atlas is powered by Atlas Medstaff, an industry leader in travel healthcare staffing. <laughs>